Hi, this is the Family Business Podcast, the podcast dedicated to helping family businesses thrive. I'm your host, Russ Hayworth, and I work with family businesses to help them to navigate the highs and lows that can come with working with your family. Each week, I will share insights and experiences from my own work and from other advisors from around the world. You will also hear directly from family businesses who have been kind enough to share their own stories. If you want to find out more about the show, just head over to fanbizpodcast.com and you can get in touch with me there and find all our previous episodes. If you're enjoying the show, I'd be very grateful if you'd leave me a review in iTunes. It helps others to find the show and it gives me a warm, fuzzy feeling in my belly. Just head over to fanbizpodcast.com forward slash iTunes and follow the link. Anyway, it's time for this week's show. Enjoy. So hello and welcome to this week's episode of the Family Business Podcast. I am delighted today to be joined by Elizabeth Bagger, who is the Director General of the IFB. So firstly, Elizabeth, welcome to the show. Thank you. And for the benefit of our audience who perhaps haven't come across the IFB or your your own role, perhaps you could just spend uh, a bit of time explaining um, who you are, what you do and how you came to be doing it. Yes, thank you very much. Um, So the Institute for Family Business is a membership organisation for family-owned businesses in the UK. We're part of a global network of similar organisations. And what we do is we bring people together for the purpose of shared learning and networking. Mm -hmm. We also speak on behalf of the sector because this powerful sector deserves a voice in government and we are that voice. Uh, I got involved with IFB 10 years ago. I had never heard of the Institute before, but I came from my own small family business, so it resonated in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. I had been away from my own family business for a couple of years before I came across the IFB working in international corporate governance. And what I hadn't realized uh, at the time was that leaving my own family business meant that I also found that I had kind of lost the purpose of going to work even though my work in corporate governance was intellectually incredibly stimulating when I came across the IFB I kind of got that purpose back Mm. because there's just something different about family businesses and that's how we all feel here at the IFB and why we work so passionately to support the people we work with and the sector at large. Fantastic and you are fresh off the back of your conference Uh, which was held in Bath this year, wasn't it? That's correct. We were in Bath last week for our biggest conference to date, talking about uh, family business culture. Mm -hmm. And that's a little bit about what we're going to be um, talking about uh, today. I've had some great things um, off the back of the conference. Unfortunately, I couldn't make it, but um, I I will hopefully be on the the list for next year. Um, But before we get into the uh, theme around culture, what's the format of the conference? Is it everyone sat in a room being talked to? Is it interactive? How, how, how do you structure that? It's a little bit of everything. So we alternate between London and the region. So it's an annual conference. And this year we were in Bath. Next year we'll be back in London. And when we are in the regions, we tend to make it a slightly longer conference. We start with business visits, a couple of workshops, and a uh, very informal buffet dinner. Mm-hmm. Because people tend to stay in the same hotel. So we've got everybody together in one place. Whereas when in London, most people have some form of either family members or friends or other people they go and stay with and hotels are a little bit more dispersed. So we don't have the same sort of group of people that we can we can work with in the same way. So we start off with really informally just getting comfortable being together again after a whole year and there's always a buzz. Mm -hmm. Then we kick off the next day with the conference program. So it's a packed full day on the first day of plenary speeches and also workshops. So Mm -hmm. there's a combination of being taught at, yes, and also having a chance to get more involved Mm -hmm. Uh, some of the workshops were incredibly interactive and quite successful in that regard. And then we build in as much networking time as we can mm-hmm. because we also know that that's where a lot of the real value lies for members. And then we finish the day with a gala dinner somewhere. And this year it was at the Roman Bath and Fantastic. it was absolutely breathtaking. Yeah. Uh, so we're very lucky. And then day two is a half day. Uh-huh. Uh, so we're back um, 
in the conference space and sometimes we do workshops on the day two and other times we don't but the, the key is to to make sure that we can finish with a nice networking lunch for those who want to stay and those who need to be somewhere else can get off early on a Friday and do that and it, it just flew by this year. Mm. Don't know what happened, but it was just <laughs> over before we knew it, and it was absolutely fantastic. Excellent. And who comes along? It might seem an obvious question, but who comes along to the conference? Who's who's it aimed at? So it's obviously aimed at our members, but it's also aimed at introducing um, non-members to the IFB and the world of family business. So we get members from all over the country come along, and what we really enjoy seeing is that people starting to bring more and more both family members and non-family senior managers with them so there were a lot of groups of a couple of family shareholders and a new chairman or a new ceo uh -huh. which is absolutely fantastic because it gives them a really powerful introduction to what life in a family business is like and uh -huh. they get to hear it from other family businesses yeah. not just the one they work for <laughs> um, and we also know that when families come together as groups or businesses come together as groups, the learning uh, is, is more powerful because you're not just one person having mm -hmm. to take everything back. So we we encourage, we actively encourage people to come as groups. We do group rates for that reason because we really want the learning to spread within the businesses. And I've had so many phone calls from people following this year's conference saying, I wish I had brought more people along. Right. So uh, I think members see the value in not being the one representative in uh -huh. the family to take it all back, but actually to, to spread it to, to other family members. And, yeah. and the networking as well is beneficial for everybody, really. Yeah, fantastic. And it, um, one of the things we hear quite often is that working within a family business can be quite isolating. You can feel quite alone and think, well, actually, we're the only people experiencing these challenges because we're the only person with this family member. But this kind of forum is is a really great way for people to share those experiences and appreciate the fact that they're not alone. And that's kind of part of the wider work for, for the IFB as well, isn't it? To, to make sure everybody feels as if they're, um, they're not alone out there. Absolutely. We always say that to people we meet. And, and I think it is quite reassuring and it is sometimes quite new to people who haven't come across the IFB before that they aren't the only people going through what they're going through. Um, and, and although each family is unique, there are also some very um, typical things that tend to come up in a family business. Mm -hmm. And talking to others about that can be incredibly helpful and cathartic and transformational for businesses. Yeah, absolutely. Fantastic. So you mentioned about the um, family business visits. Um, is the idea behind that, is it a, a chance to experience what other families have done well or is it a, a showcase? How, how does that work? It's really a chance to get an insight into, an in-depth insight into another family business because one thing is talking about it at a conference but actually seeing it live. Mm. Um, we usually get people coming back from those visits saying, wow, super impressive and really buzzing from having seen what's either been manufactured or done or um, created by, by the family. And, and I think it's just really to give a different perspective on, on the learning. So we yeah. call them learning journeys for that yeah. reason. And they sound great. And it, I think as a species, we're inherently a bit nosy anyway, mm -hmm. aren't we? So we like yes. going around and, and looking at yes. real life examples of, of perhaps stuff that we've, uh, we've been hearing. So yes. um, they sound really good. And the theme for this year's conference was culture. Yes. Um, explain the background as to why that was seen as an important theme for, um, for this year. We started talking about it probably about a year ago and we wanted to try and do something slightly different and something topical. And there are lots of ideas being um, shared amongst the team. And, um, and when we got to the point of talking about culture, we realized that actually we, we often talk about how family business culture is different. You know, members talk about it, we talk about it, but we'd never actually looked at but different how, what mm. does it mean? So the theme was um, crafted and the title was Cultivating Culture in Family Business because we really wanted to unpack it. We wanted to 
um, to look at what is it, you know, how can you temperature check it? How can you make it fit for your purpose and those mm. types of things? So um, it was it was quite exciting once we agreed it, but then we were also a little bit nervous because it was a bit of a departure from some of the things we'd done in the past yeah, that were, okay. were more sort of typical family business topics. Yeah. But it just it just worked because we've been talking a lot about how family businesses are different and trying to articulate that and somehow culture seemed to do that. Mm. Not just for us, but for the members as well. Yeah, and it's it's a subject that is huge, but at the same time really personal because mm. each family will have their own views on yeah. um, culture and the yeah. importance of it. And you had a, obviously a lot of the sessions were based on um, the cultural side of things. What were some of the standout um, sort of keynotes or, or learning? Um, have we got enough time today to cover <laughs> all of the, the learning um, there, there takeaways were, from it? There were, there were so many. Um, but one of the things that um, stood out for me and something we've reflected on post-conference and, you know, actually I'll, I'll borrow some words from one of our board members who phoned me up um, on Monday after the conference and she said, it was the best by a country mile. And I've been to a few. And he said, you know, I've been thinking about why it was so much better than all the others. And, and he said, I think it was because we touched the heart of what family business is all about. Mm -hmm. When you run your own business, you can do things your way. You can do things the way you think it should be done. You can actually be market leaders. You don't have to be market followers. You don't have to, to do it the corporate way. You have the freedom to do it your way. And I think some of the speeches that we heard that were really inspiring spoke to that. The care that goes into it, the... Mm. Um, the creativity that goes into it. We had Tim Smith from the Eden Project with us, and he was hugely fascinating because he's done things his way. Yeah. And in a lot of ways, most family businesses do that um, because they, they, they stick to their convictions. Mm. So we talked earlier about how we, um, as family members, or how family members can be the guardians of the culture in the business yeah. and how it needs to be the family, really, and... And I think there was a lot of nods around the room and a lot of people who feel that that's exactly uh, what they are, are partly there for, whether they work in the business, sit on the board or act as active, um, caring shareholders. And presence is really important. So people who work for family businesses like seeing the family owners yeah. and like seeing that owning their business matters to them. Mm -hmm. So. That's one of the things that I think a lot of people took away. Um, I also uh, think that just seeing live how family business owners are really humble and, and are not scared to admit when they get things wrong and are, are not scared to act according to their values, even if it means yeah. uh, not winning a contract. We heard that as well. And I think that really was quite inspiring to hear that family businesses might say no to something that could be profitable because they want to do it their way. Yeah. Um, it's a really useful reminder, isn't it, of, of the importance of the, the family business mm -hmm. um, sector as a whole. And you mentioned about it being a bit of a, a removal from what's traditionally covered at, at some conferences. And I think what can happen is not specifically at conferences, but the kind of content that's directed at business in general is generic and bland, whereas this is an emotive subject. The, the emotion around culture is such an important factor that mm -hmm. makes or helps to make family businesses so unique. And so I think tapping into that and the importance of that in terms of longevity for businesses, in terms of um, we've heard as well about re um, recruitment and retention of staff, if there's a culture that people can really buy into, then it helps to yes. create that re recruitment and retention it does. Uh, appeal. And I mean, the, the, the benefits of a positive culture, I guess we could say are endless, but what are the ones that really stood out for you in terms of the, the benefits of getting culture right within the business? There was an interesting example of um, one of our members who talked about staff recruitment and retention saying that I can't remember the exact percentage, but it was incredibly high. It was 80% or something. He said 80% of those who leave us come back within a month. 
Wow. Because <laughs> they actually realize they want to be part of what we do because we do it the way we do it. Yeah. And I thought that that is it. That is so powerful that, okay, so you may not realize what you've got once you're, well, whilst you're there, but the minute you leave, you actually see exactly what you've lost and then mm. you want to go back. And, and then we're very open to that, very obviously very caring business. And, uh, and I think that's the, that's the same for a lot of them, that it is the, um, it is the values and the fact that you matter to the family you work for because you become part of the family mm. that become the um, sort of attracting force. And I know from some of our larger members that they're not finding it as difficult to compete with PLCs as maybe they did in the past because right. people want more than just a pay packet these yes. days. They actually want to be part of something that matters, that's yes. doing business in a decent way, that has a purpose, that yeah. wants to do good in the world. And family businesses do that and people see it. Mm. And I think if you, you uh, if we pick up on the comparison there between, say, PLC and, and family business, I've worked in some PLCs, good companies, but the values that come down are, are again, a bit kind of generic out of the box and mm -hmm. um, are there more because they look good on a poster than they actually mean anything. And the shift that we're seeing in terms of what appeals to people when they're looking for work, as you say, is more than just financial. They want that purpose. And family businesses are, are so well placed to be able to articulate that culture because it is something that comes from inherently inside of them, isn't it? It is. And I think what we see is that when a family get together to talk about why do we own this business together, once they get clear about that and about their values and they find a way of communicating that, they become an unstoppable force. Mm. There is nothing more powerful than a group of united owners who who have a reason for doing what they do together yeah. and and you can't somehow not be attracted to that mm. and um and it was interesting to see that quite a number of our members brought their hr directors to conference okay. as well just because they also wanted to make sure that it was it was captured within the whole business mm. i think that says a lot yeah um it's it's not that common i don't think to see that mm. in industry conferences and but here you know that there is that care if we want our people to feel this we see our staff as family so yeah and there's some really novel ideas being shared by hr directors and others with responsibility for people and uh -huh. and um and you could see that the culture and the the purpose and the values of the family are really translated into the business but also it's from the ground up so there were a lot of businesses who spent a lot of time talking to their staff they said surveys are fine it's good it's important but we want to hear what people have to say mm. and we want to bring that back to the family as well so it becomes a two-way dialogue yeah or it becomes a dialogue yeah absolutely and if if a family has um, perhaps set up a family business and not paid deliberate attention to culture and how to articulate what their culture is because sometimes it just is, isn't it? It, mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be something that's written down. But, but in order to kind of scale and make it something that is tangible, how would a family go about starting to articulate what's important to them in cultures? Mm -hmm. Do you think that's a values discussion where you kind of agree what those values are or, or was there anything that came out of the conference? To well, one of the interesting things is, um, was in the opening um, presentation by Randall Carlock for Sredinsia, and he... Um, he said, families have values or people have values and companies have culture. Mm -hmm. So it's really about finding ways of translating the values of the family and of the business. Sometimes they're the same, sometimes they're slightly different. Um, and, and making that live. So we talked a little bit about in, in a group discussion we had about, do you have the same values for the business and for the family or are they different? And, and you know, there are no rights and wrongs, but I think it's about finding ways of living what you truly, truly believe. Mm. And when you do that, then you can begin to affect your culture. And if you're consistent with that, then you're creating culture. Because you're creating culture no matter what you do. Yes. It's just, do you do it consciously while you're not fully aware of, of what you're doing? And, and being true to, to your core values is mm. a great way of doing that. And... Um, and I was talking to members saying, of course we have values and of course we know who we are, 
but we could do more to articulate that. Mm. We could do more to really make that live in the business. Yeah. So I think that's one of the ways in which you can go about it is by just becoming really clear about who are we as a family business and how do we tell that story. One of the things that came out of the conference time and time again was stories are so powerful. Um, so that was one of my key takeaways that we need to tell more stories because mm. stories are really compelling yeah. ways of communicating. And I think that's something that family businesses can do as well, aren't, isn't it? Because again, telling the story, building that history, it yeah. removes it from we're accountable to our shareholders because we have to have a dividend yield of X, Y, and Z because we're a PLC and blah, blah, mm -hmm. blah. It, that always gets diluted. Mm -hmm. Whereas actually with a privately owned family mm -hmm. business, it can be a much, a much greater opportunity to actually sing about the fact that there is yep. this fantastic story behind it all. Absolutely. And I think one of the things that families enjoy is that it's not just about the money or dividend we're here to do stuff and we, we want to be proud of that. We want to, we're proud of our legacy and we can tell that story. But we're also really proud of where we're going and really excited about where we're going and really excited about the impact that we can have on the societies that we operate in. Yeah. And I think that there can often be a misconception when you talk about family business that it's kind of a mum and dad shop and that's as, as big as it gets. But that there's obviously huge family businesses out there and that culture, when, when you see it, in operation, you can see it in operation within really big um, companies. It's a hugely inspiring thing to see because it's it's an example for for others to be able to follow. Um, we've talked a lot about the very positive side of a positive culture, but th th are there also occasions where culture can be a barrier, where it can be something that you think, well. We really want to go in this direction, but actually it doesn't quite fit with the, the culture that the businesses had. Was that something that came out at all? Um, not particularly at conference, but that's not to say that that isn't also the case. And I think it's about finding the balance between the legacy of the business and, and where that family business has come from and where it needs to go in future. So it's probably about bridging the gap between the past, the present and the future and finding ways of making sure that all generations are comfortable, that each part is being acknowledged. Mm -hmm. I think the way that that works really well is when you see it as a build. You're building on the past to create the future. But it's an intergenerational dialogue sometimes to mm -hmm. make sure that no generation feels like their contribution is not seen as, as valuable. Yeah. And that leads into um, my next question, actually, which is around the evolution of family firms. We've, we've seen, we've spoken about it already, about the changing demands from the, the workforce in terms of dialing into a, a purpose rather than just the, the financial rewards. But how do you see family firms evolving over time to, to incorporate the, the changing nature of uh, the world that we're living in, uh, particularly around sort of culture and employment? I think family businesses are probably better place to do that than most other types of businesses. They, they have the longevity to prove that they have adapted in the past and will probably continue to do so for the future. And, um, and somebody asked me a while ago about, you know, aren't they stuck in the past? And I was very pleased I was able to quote one of our members as um, saying to me, well, Family businesses have the ability to out entrepreneur entrepreneurs yeah. because we've done it generation after generation. So we've learned all the, the really important lessons of the past and we can continue to do so for the future. So I think that in and of itself is quite an interesting perspective to have on that. Mm -hmm. But it does require curiosity. It does require that you are uh, wanting to continue to engage with the world around you. But I see no shortage of appetite for that Absolutely. when I talk to family businesses. And again, when you're in business with your family, it takes almost a, a high level of importance anyway, doesn't it? Because it mm. is the family that's being yeah. represented. So it, that's a, a big advantage again for yes. family-owned firms. I think they, they see the responsibility. And I was, I was at a conference yesterday and I was talking to someone who was um, reflecting on sort of their role in in the future going forward because there wasn't necessarily a sort of strong next-gen group to hand over the business to. And he said, but I feel so um, responsible for, you know, 
to the family, to mm-hmm. the staff, to all our customers that we've been serving for over a hundred years. And I think that's just that's just family business yeah. uh, through and through. And therefore, they find ways. And I have no doubt that this company will will find a way forward as well. And um, you know, provided that the family is still keen to continue to own the business, because of course, um, it requires that ambition to do yeah. so. And and we see that in, in most family businesses. That people are proud to be mm. part of their family business. And yes. if it's been going for generations, you don't particularly want to be the, the generation who yeah. decides to leave it all behind yeah. if you can avoid it. That can so. be a huge pressure as well, can't it, in terms of, of course, yeah. you know, the responsibility of, of doing that. But you can almost take a reassurance around the fact that the business has been there for a very long time. Therefore, yeah. it's, um, yeah, it might take some effort. to. Yeah, and family businesses are gifted with the the time to plan nine times out of ten because of course there are those moments where things happen and you couldn't have foreseen what was going to happen but if you start the conversation early you will have done some of the groundwork and that can be anything from you know how do we hand over ownership how do we hand over management or you know and and those conversations are really important to have early on so that people can feel well-equipped to take over whatever it is that they'll be taking over Mm -hmm. when the time comes. Yeah, couldn't agree more. Uh, I'm going to put you on the spot now, and it's a bit like asking somebody to pick their favourite child. Did you have a favourite speaker at the conference or a favourite topic that sort of really um, piqued your interest, or do you love everybody equally? (laughs) (laughs) I do love everybody equally. Um, However, um, I think a a few... um, stood out for me and um i i cannot deny being inspired by tim smith Mm -hmm. he was just so different and i found myself scribbling more notes during his session than any other Uh, i was also um inspired and frightened in equal measure by what pippa malmgren dr pippa malmgren had to share with all of us around you know, the, the way the world is moving and, and how data is being, how our data is being um, handled. Mm. Uh, and uh, she's saying, this is not the future, this is happening now, so goodness knows what's wow. going to happen. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, so, so those two stood out for me uh, because they talked about something that was a little bit new and a little bit edgy, and um, we had so many wonderful family business speakers, Um that I wouldn't want to highlight yeah. anyone over it, others, but but those two were different, and, mm. and I think from what I heard from from members, it was refreshing to yeah. to have their perspectives. And I think the way that um, you um, have described the structure of it means that it is such an open experience. It's, you can take away from it the specific keynotes, or you can take away from it the elements of the workshop or the visits to other family businesses. You, there's something in there for everybody's taste yeah. in terms of how they want to um, obtain that information. Next potentially tricky question is how are you going to top it for next year? That is a very <laughs> tricky question. We haven't answered that for ourselves yet, but um, we, we may start to look at the structure of conference as the next thing to, uh-huh. uh, to hack, right. uh, just to, to keep it fresh and to do things slightly differently because yeah. we do want to continue to grow the, the conference and... Um, we were very inspired. This is the first time that we've had a regional conference be bigger than any other conference we've ever had wow. before. So it has really sort of set the bar high, but it's also um, whetted our appetite to continue to find new ways of yeah. making it bigger and better. Fantastic. Well, we look forward to um, hearing about um, next year's event. Where can our audience find out about um, the work you do with the um, IFB in general? And then obviously that will um, contain at some point dates and details for for next year's conference. Yes, it absolutely will. So we have a website where everything we do is contained. It's ifb.org.uk. There is information about all of the different events we do around the country, all of the different resources that are available to people for download. Mm-hmm. And um, there's a lot of advice and insights. There's guides and there's research on there. And, um, yeah, the conference dates will be on the website shortly. Fantastic. And we'll put links up on there uh, on the show notes to um, point people in um, that direction. 
Um, and I'm sure we're going to speak again in the future. I look forward to speak to you about next year's conference as well when the details have been um, concluded. Um, but for now, thank you very much for your time and uh, the input from the conference. It sounds fantastic. Thank you very much for having me. I hope you found this episode useful. If you have, then why not share it with your family and see what they think? I work with families just like yours to help them to better understand the complexities that can come with being a family in business. So whether you're just starting out or heading into the umpteenth generation, if you feel that I could help, check out fanbizpodcast.com forward slash work with Russ and get in touch. Until next time, take care.